Back in my time dilations video, someone commented mentioning the Genshin manga and Venti talking about certain names and gods who created Teyvat. This along with the primordial one, the shades, Celestia, and even the old gods make me think that we already knew who they were. And that Mihoyo or Hoyoverse was hiding it all under our noses all along. First I wanna thank Jonathan Amorim or Amarim for commenting and giving me the idea of making this video. With that said, this video is gonna focus on the four shining shades of the primordial one, as well as who they could be, the old gods in the Genshin manga, and this is also going to include some theory and conjecture on Venti's relation to these old gods as well as what Venti really knows about the past. Let's start with the Primordial One. For anyone who doesn't know, Teyvat was created by the Primordial One. It's said in the book Before the Sun and Moon that Fanes the Primordial One created Teyvat using both the shell from which they came from and with the help of the Four Shades. Specifically, one of the Shades helped Fanes, but we don't really know if all four of them helped. Now then, if you've already read the Genshin manga, Venti mentions that in other distant worlds, gods like Pangu, Purusha and Ymir sacrificed themselves to create the life in the so-called unliving cosmos. Pangu's blood made the seas, Purusha's body was used to fashion the living, and Ymir's brain was used to make the clouds. Venti ends this by saying these were the songs of the primeval ones. Interestingly, Venti speaks of more than one primeval slash primordial one, but he mentions that this was from a different world. But what world could Venti be speaking of? Other bubble worlds like in Hong Kai? perhaps? Maybe. Other realities, like Enkonomiya's library anomaly, or the most recent treasure hunting quest. Or maybe realities that were fabricated that we didn't know about, like the Sakura tree in Inazuma. We honestly can't say, but Enkonomiya's ties to the primordial one and Venti's story in the manga could mean that Enkonomiya wasn't really in Teyvat to begin with, or at least existed somewhere else that isn't Teyvat. Now this in and of itself is a whole theory already, and interestingly, the gods mentioned in the manga intertwine with Enkonomiya's story in-game. These gods being Pangu, Urusha, and Ymir, which were all primordial ones who had the same cosmic egg and created the world in their own mythology. Let's start with Pangu. So Pangu is the primordial being from Chinese mythology. But before he came into being, the world was nothing but an empty space called the primordial state. The primordial state in the universe coalesced or let's say merged together into an egg called the cosmic egg. Now doesn't that just sound familiar? But it doesn't stop there. Once he was born from the egg, he was said to separate the sky and earth just as he separated yin and yang. The whole story is that he basically became the pillar that separates both yin and yang and separates the sky and earth. Compared to Genshin's where Pangu used his blood to create every form of natural water, and oddly familiar, in some stories Pangu was helped by four prominent beasts. A turtle, a chi lin, there you go I said it correctly, a phoenix, and a dragon. Just like Fanes from Genshin was helped by the four shades. This is oddly familiar to the story of Fanes, the primordial one from both Greek mythology and in Genshin's story of Enkonomi. Coincidence? Uh, I don't really know. Tell me in the comments below what you guys think of Pangu. Next is Purusha, who is the Hindu primordial being. This is a more nuanced um, story because I'm not really good with Hindu because of the amount of gods that they have. But the gist is that Purusha uses its primordial self and separated the sky and earth, along with everything else, using what's called the Hiranyagarbha, which is again the cosmic egg, but in Hindu context. Two similar creation stories. And if we include Fanes from Greek mythology, that makes it three. Purusha's story was kind of different in that it sacrificed its primordial self to create man and woman. In Genshin's context, Purusha's whole self was sacrificed as well as his or her body parts were used to create all the living beings. Pretty cool iterations of mythology done by Hoyoverse, yeah? But the next one, Ymir, is kind of different. See, Ymir, like the previous mentioned primordial ones, was also the first being from Norse mythology. Born from the elemental water droplets from the frost river of Ilivegar. Of Ilivegar. Or Ilivegar. Uh, this frozen river came from the primordial void, another primordial void, called Gin Ginnunga Gap. At which point, Ymir then created male and female beings along with a six-headed being. And then created Odin, Vili, and Vey 
and finally creating the world called Joro using their flesh. Regarding Ymir, I'm gonna have to let comments clarify the extensive creation through Norse mythology as I can't completely say what happened first or what exactly happened. But one of the takes on Ymir also includes his brains literally being thrown into the sky and becoming the clouds. I'll let your imagination visualize that part. Now that we're done with canon lore and IRL references, let's dive down into the more theory side of the video. Pangu, Purusha, and Ymir were all basically the primordial ones in the so-called distant worlds. And Venti knowing these events just purely through his song could mean that the events he speaks of have actually happened before or were just folk tales passed on for thousands and thousands of years. But the one thing that it could have in common with our current Teyvat is that it might have happened in the same way our world was created, like how the Primordial One and the Four Shades created Teyvat, which is highly possible because we ourselves are called Travelers and are labeled Outlanders, meaning that there are other worlds and universes out there apart from Teyvat. Now let's say these distant gods from distant worlds all have nearly the exact same events happening in Teyvat. Then the events that happened 500 years ago as well as the events in Enkanomiya could have happened in those same distant worlds. Pair that with the fact that Venti was born from a branch of time along with the way our sibling hints that we've always had time and the whole time paradox that we've been seeing in Enkanamiya and the most recent Raiden quest where Makoto uses a seed and plants the Sakura tree ahead of time where Raiden is the only person who knows about the tree not existing. This makes me think of a butterfly effect of somewhat similar origins but drastically different endpoints. So this could mean that the world of Genshin could be in some form of limbo between multiple alternate realities. Similar to what happened in Honkai where the Honkai disease or the Honkai invasion is pretty much inevitable and what the humans right now are doing are using seeds and bubble universes to find out a way to postpone or avoid the Honkai invasion. So the way Venti mentions the creation of distant worlds is by having all three of them in the same universe being sacrificed to make the world. Venti also mentions other gods than just the three, and specifically saying that the gods sacrificed one of them and made the world from the unliving cosmos. So rather than Pangu, Purusha, and Ymir sacrificing themselves for the world, they were instead sacrificed by other gods to quote-unquote create the world. And Venti even calls this the Song of the Primeval Ones. Now, if I were to be biased, the other gods that sacrificed the primeval ones were probably the four shades of the primordial ones, not including Easteroth, of course. Because again, Easteroth was busy helping the Enkanomians, while the primordial one and the three shades were fighting the second one, as well as whatever it had when the second war began. So, these three remaining shades were then sacrificed to re-create the world from the unliving cosmos. As for the primordial one, it seems that it was absent from the creation process when it happened, which could mean that the primordial one really was defeated by the second one. And once the second one was victorious, it used the three remaining shades to create, or for a better word, reshape Teyvat by sacrificing them. You could be asking, well, Aru, didn't you just say that the primeval gods were from distant worlds? Yes, I did, Timmy. But why would Venti say it in a way that separates the creation of the world when Venti himself is one of the oldest beings in Teyvat? Barbados is the original Animo Archon who came into being roughly more than 500 years before the Archon Wars, which took place 2,000 years ago. And one final note about Venti is being born from the branches of time. Specifically speaking, Venti was once a thread of the Thousand Winds. Remember that name? If you can remember, the word Thousand Winds is a relation to Easteroth, the god of time, which points a lot of fingers that Venti knows more than just wind and animo. That said, if we talk about time itself, it does not just affect the flow of time, but even objects, locations, and even memories slash consciousness of people. We see this firsthand in our most recent quest with A and Makoto's plane of consciousness. But that's gonna be for the next video on the list. Back to Venti, it's no lie that he's born from the branches of time, meaning that he really is born from Easteroth. But his happy-go-lucky, relaxed nature could be. Behind that smile lies within it the sight and maybe even the memory of possibly two or more worlds or universes. And if my theory about time 
time and its relations to basically everything is somewhat correct or nearly correct, Venti should know about the multiple time phenomena and paradoxes caused by Makoto, Easteroth, the Abyss, and maybe Conria and Enkonomiya. But again, conjectures and theories as always. Summarizing this video up, I know it seems like it has a lot of plot holes and that's because it does, <laughs> but it's just that the vagueness of how Oyoverse gives out their backstory for literally anything in the game is nigh impossible to make out any clear lore unless said by Hoyoverse themselves. The latest quests on Enkonomiya and Raiden not only added something to think about but also increased the level of relationships between theories that you could have, especially when that theory is about time, which has a big impact on Inazuma, A, and even the travelers in-game. And the latest quests make that even more prevalent. So in regards to time, basically anything could be possible. Well, not, not really anything. A lot of things could be possible. And not to make a pun out of this video, it's just a matter of time until we can piece together every bit of lore and backstory that the game has. That is unless this game comes and eats me alive. So that's all I can say about the three primeval gods and their possible relation to the current timeline, storyline, and plot of Genshin, as well as Venti's relation to basically everything in the game. As always, I want to say thanks to everybody at Honey Hunters Discord for answering some of my questions that I keep asking when I make these videos, so go check them out. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video interesting and you want to see more of it, and click that bell icon if you want to see See more of my videos. Comment down below whatever you guys think about what I've said so far in relation to Venti, the Primordial Ones, the current story of Teyvat, or maybe just say hi. I'll be sure to reply if I have a good answer or if I have something worth talking about in relation to your comments. That's gonna be it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah?